Thank you. So climate change is ever present in our collective conscious today. Uh, we're thinking more about carbon more than we ever have before. And in general, we think of trees and forests as our carbon banks where carbon is stored. Uh, but the real powerhouses of soil carbon storage are peatlands. And peatlands are a type of wetland that is characterized by a uh, dense soil organic matter that is called peat. Uh, it's very mucky, and I can tell you that from personal experience, that makes them not very fun to walk through. But it does allow them to hold an astounding 500 billion metric tons of carbon worldwide. Uh, for context, that is more than the U.S. has emitted through burning fossil fuels since the invention of the steam engine. Now, peatlands are able to do this in part because of local cool and wet conditions that prevent peat from decaying rapidly. But we're concerned that as climate change drives the warming and drying of peatlands, these systems will no longer be able to accumulate carbon well and will instead begin releasing it into the atmosphere, which will amplify the greenhouse effect. Now, peatlands are understudied in many ways, and this is particularly true in temperate regions, such as here in the eastern US. Uh, and my research aims to uh, fill in some of these gaps in our knowledge of peatlands. Specifically, my aims are to characterize the plant communities of Pennsylvanian peatlands and to relate these communities to environmental variables such as how much shade is available or what nutrients are in the water. Now this is important because different plant communities have different relationships with the carbon cycle and because in order to properly conserve peatlands, we need to fully understand them. So to date, I have gathered samples from 28 microhabitats within three peatlands in the Pocono Mountains. And I'm currently in the process of analyzing these samples to gather my raw data. And once this process is complete, then I will input my data into a statistical model that groups the communities based on their relative similarities to one another. The model also compares these groupings to the environmental variables that I've analyzed to determine which ones are most important in peatland plant diversity. Finally, I will produce geospatial models uh, that will show clearly to anyone what my results are through maps. My work also promises to have strong real world impacts because I have collaborated with scientists at the Pennsylvania Natural Heritage Program throughout my work. And I will share with them my results so that they can use these directly to benefit peatland conservation strategies here in our home state. I strongly believe that understanding and conserving peatlands is a critical step to ameliorating our climate crisis and guiding us into a brighter, greener future. Thank you. All right, questions for Joshua. Yes, right here. It would be a very silly question, but is it possible to create peatlands? Like if there were like lands that were left over from like old strip mines or something, could you plant a mixture of plants to create like an artificial engineered peatland en environment? The answer is yes, but it would not be very efficient and that's because peatlands accumulate all this carbon over thousands of years. They actually don't have very high productivity, they just have such slow decay that they're holding on to thousands to ten thousands of years worth of carbon. One more question. So peatlands are concentrated in the boreal zone, which is just the subarctic zone, so about 50 to 70 degrees north. Um, and there are, to a lesser extent, also in the temperate zones around the world. And there are very few in the global south, particularly in Argentina. Fantastic, thank you, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs>